G'day folks, in this video I'm going to give you five very helpful tips to help you take better selfies with your fish. Counting down from five to one. Rightio, we're going to count down from five, starting with number five. <laughs> Tip number five, and this is a simple one, is to always make sure that the lens on your camera is clean. If your lens has got a bit of dust or if it's a little bit damp or something, the photo will look terrible. It will look foggy. It will look misty and hazy. It'll even affect the light going into the camera. Because it's a mobile phone and it's already got an outer cover on it, and sometimes it can be as simple as just giving it a wipe with your shirt, just to make sure there's no dust on it. Or you can go one better. If you go to your local chemist, you can actually buy glasses cleaning stuff, boxes of little sachets. You open them up to clean your glasses, they will clean the lens, and you will be amazed at how much better your photos will look if you ensure that your lens is always clean. Right, now tip number four is all about composition. Right now, I look absolutely terrible. So we'll fix that up and we'll compose it in a way that I should look on the camera. How does that look? Is that a bit better? Is that better? You want to fill the frame. You want your head to be somewhere near the top of the frame. You don't want huge, big expanses of gap between yourself and the top, or between the sides, depending how wide angle it is. So try and get as close as you can to the camera so that you fill the frame up. This is a mistake that I see a lot of YouTubers make with their videos, as well as people with their fish photos. So fill the frame up with yourself, because it's you that the people want to see. If I was holding a fish now, you'd want to see me, and you would want to see the fish. You're not really interested in those treetops and that tree and what's happening above me. That's what we in the photography circles call wasted space. So get nice and close to the camera and fill it up. And while I'm talking about composition, that's just one rule of composition. Composition is the way you compose the photo. And something else that you should do to compose a decent fish photo is make sure the photo is on the fish. If you're photographing with your phone, hold yourself up, look at the photo, touch the phone where the fish is to ensure that the photo, the focus, is on the fish. Now, you'll see a lot of people will hold fish out really close. In social media, on Facebook, people get bagged out for it because a lot of people think that the fishermen are trying to make the fish look bigger by holding it closer. In actual fact, a lot of the time, and this is when I do that, is because I want the fish to be nice and sharp and in focus, and I want me to be a little bit blurry in the background. By having a blurry me and a blurry background, what that does, as a nice sharp fish, it naturally draws people's eyes on the fish. There's actually a name for that blurry background, and that is bokeh. The more smoother the bokeh and the more sharper the photo, the, uh, the, the subject, the better the photo. So try and fill the frame up with your head. Hold yourself, make sure your tail, the head, the whole lot is in focus. Hold the fish out a little bit if you want to. Make sure you touch your phone on the fish so that it knows to focus on that part. Because if the fish is the subject, then the fish needs to be in focus. And one more little uh, micromanaged tip, I suppose you could say, not only do you want the fish in focus, but you need to have the eye sharp. If you're holding a fish lengthways like that, quite often there might be a sweet spot where the middle of the fish is sharp, the tail's blurry and the nose is blurry. That's okay, provided the eye is sharp. No matter what wildlife you're photographing, whether you're photographing a big trout that you've just caught, or a koala bear up in a tree, it's all about the eyes. And that's the same with portraits. If you're photographing someone's wedding, the most important thing to be in focus is the eye. So when you're, whether you're holding your fish out close to the camera or whatever angle, just make sure that you touch your phone to always focus on the eye, fill the frame up with yourself, and that will make a much clearer photo. <laughs> Tip number three is to be ready. Be ready so that when you catch a fish, you're ready to go. Before you even start fishing, get your settings right. Do you want a 16 by nine aspect ratio, which is sort of your typical mobile phone long sort of flat photo? Do you want a four by six, which is your standard rectangular photo that most far photography places will print out at? Do you want a one-to-one -one photo, a square photo for Instagram? Make sure you've got it set right. Make sure you've got it on selfie mode so the photo is actually facing yourself. And make sure if you, if you uh, need to use the timer, that you know how to set that as quickly as possible. Some phones, you can set the timer, and then the next time you turn your phone on, the timer is still set. Others, such as this one here, the timer turns itself off automatically. So if I set the timer now, 
do what I've got to do, put my phone in my pocket. Next time I take it out, I've got to set the timer again. So practice when you're not fishing, when you're at home, during the week, after work, on your lunch break, familiarize yourself with your camera settings Learn how to use the timer really fast, how to switch it into selfie mode really fast and make sure you've got the camera set on the settings you want. Naturally, for the best quality photos, you want to make sure that you've got the, photo, the, the camera set on the highest definition possible. I think this one is 10 megapixels or something similar because the more megapixels you've got, not only does it give you a clearer photo, but it allows you to crop in and adjust colours and stuff a lot more than what a low resolution photo does. So always make sure that you've got your camera ready to go and you are super familiar with the settings such as the self timer and selfie mode so that you can be as quick as you can. And that leads me into tip number two, something, that's else, something else that's going to help you speed up and that's some gear. <laughs> Okay, tip number two is some gear. I'm going to run through a few things that I use that help me out. Just little tools. This is an invaluable tool. This is a Manfrotto tripod. It's nice and sturdy and strong, and it's got a mobile phone holder on the top. This actually screws on and off. That's a universal mount on tripods. That'll go on any tripod. So I always make sure when I'm fishing, if I want to use my phone, that that is on there, ready to go. Now, the Manfrotto mobile phone mount is elastic. What that means is when I catch a fish, I can quickly put it in. See how long that took? About quarter of a second. Put it in. Go into the photos. Bang, bang, bang. Smile. And then release the fish. Make sure that you are ready to go. That I'm going to put some links below this video to the gear that I'm talking about now to where you can buy it on Amazon. A lot of camera stores, your local camera stores might also sell it. But if you like online buying, I'll put some links below to Amazon. But that is a Manfrotto. I bought that as a kit. You can still buy them, but they look slightly different. That's actually very, very sturdy. The downside to this is it's not flexible. So you want a nice flat ground. This is what's called a ball head. So you can push that button in, then move that to any angle you want, take the button out, and it stays pretty firm. But it's only firm within reason, if you know what I mean. It's not 100% versatile. And because these legs are rigid, you want quite flat ground or reasonably flat ground, and then you can compensate with the ball head. But this is probably my favorite of the two that I'm gonna show you. That's a Manfrotto. Awesome bit of gear. Fantastic for uh, using it to take fish photos if you're on your own. This one here, this is a Joby Gorilla Pod. These are actually quite awkward things to use. They're very, uh, your cameras can tip over really easy. I'll take the ad attachment off the top first while I'm talking. Now, these are flexible. The beauty of these things, you can put them on a branch and you can, <laughs> the legs actually break. This is a bit old, this one. They're designed to do that. The legs actually come apart, but you can put them on a branch and you can wrap the legs around and you can tie it to the branch like that. You can put it on a branch, a fence, or anything you need. Bigger ones hold more weight, but they'll adapt to anything and you can stick them on stuff. I could stick this to any of these little trees here, set my phone up on one of the trees. So that's much more versatile than the Manfrotto that I just showed you. Stable, rigid legs, but stability and sturdiness. Unstable, not so sturdy, but flexible and durable, so you can attach it to stuff. That is a JB Gorilla Pod. I figured there's about three sizes. I think this is the middle one, so it's good for mobile phones and light compact cameras. Now, this is something I just bought recently. I bought this off Amazon. It's a ZDO or Zadio or something. What this is, it's similar to the Manfrotto mobile phone thing that I just showed you. Now, the difference with this one is you've got to actually screw the clamp. If I turn that, you can see the clamp, clamp getting smaller. If I go back that way, you can see the clamp getting bigger. Now what that means is when I put my phone in, I actually have to unscrew it, make it the right size, a little bit more, and then do it up. So it's a little bit more fiddling around. That's the downside to that one. But the upside, and the reason that I bought this, is because it's got an extra screw. I can turn it around there, and I can turn it upright for upright photos, which is what I use. This is what I use for my Instagram stories and Instagram video, IGTV stuff. So I can actually have that in a tripod upright. So they've got, uh, they've got the Manfrotto sturdy legs with the um, elastic mobile phone thing. Much better quality. Much, well, it's going to be more expensive, but it's better quality. And I've got this set up here, which is the Joby Gorillapod with this, what did I say it was called? Zadio. Um, a phone mount that spins around and allows you to do landscape or portrait mode photos. As I said, I will put these in the description below. 
But if you use tip number two, uh, three, sorry, tip number three and have your camera ready to go, tip number two, what that means is when you're fishing, you can just sit that on a log, stick your phone in, unlock it, go into the camera, and there we go, put it on selfie mode, and I'm already, you can see there, I'm already on selfie mode, ready to go as quick as you like. <laughs> Rightio folks, tip number one, and this is the most important tip, that is lighting. Right now, now the light's a little bit low, but it's even. This is what photographers call even light. You'll notice I'm not shaded out there, I'm not shaded out this side. That's because the sun has set behind the hill beside me here, meaning the light's a bit low, but it's even. If the sun was high in the sky and hitting me there, then this bit down here is gonna be shadowed. What I would have, I'd have black, black bags under my eyes and I'd be shaded on one side. You need good lighting. Even light you like this is great. Overcast days with that nice thick high level cloud that allow plenty of light to come through but not enough to cause shadows, they're ideal, but we don't get them every time we go fishing. Sometimes you get bright sunshine. If you are taking a selfie in bright sunshine, face the sun. It's gonna be awkward. You might have your phone, you might be uh, having on a tripod or something, and you might have the sun behind you. What I'll do, I'll put my camera back in this tripod for an example. You might have that like that, or you might have that sitting up on a rock, say. But you want the sun directly in your eyes. It might not be pleasant at the time of taking the photos, but if you stand with the sun behind you, it will be much more pleasant on your eyes, but the photo won't be pleasant because either, A, the camera will metre off the sun, making it a much faster shutter than it needs, and you will be silhouetted, you'll just be a silhouette against a, a nice backdrop, or two, the camera will meter off you, making the exposure correct, but because there's so much light coming in from behind you, the edges of you will get really soft and furry looking and it'll just look really bad. The best thing you can do is face the sun. Even if you stand side onto the sun, let's say the sun's coming in there, you're gonna get shadows all down one side. Where possible, you wanna face into the sun for the best quality light. Now let me talk about the light. Cameras, rule of thumb, the bigger the sensor, the better they handle something called the dynamic range. The dynamic range is the difference between the darkest parts of the photo and the brightest parts of the photo, or contrast. So the greater the dynamic range, the harder it is for the camera to get a decent light meaning. So if you're taking a photo, a bride and groom is a classic example. The groom's in a black suit, the bride's in a white dress. You, nine times out of 10, you're gonna overexpose the bride's dress in order to get the groom's black suit right, or you're gonna underexpose the black suit and make him look like he's wearing a shadow so that you can get the bride's uh, dress right. That's what's called, that's what's called um, dynamic range. So the greater the dynamic range, the bigger the sensor in the camera, the better it handles it. So if you've got a full frame sensor like a Canon 5D or something, they will handle contrast much better than a smaller sensor. And here's the bad news. Mobile phones have really small sensors. Now, a lot of people say to me, I take great photos with my phone. I love my phone. It takes awesome photos. That's great. And it's true if the light is right. And that goes back to having the light shining on you to make sure you've got a nice bang, flat light, not bright and dark, or not bright and the back and dark at the front. Have all the light on the subject and the darkness behind you and you'll get a much better photo. So work with the light and always make sure you're looking into the light, particularly with mobile phones as they've got such small sensors. Rightio, here is a bonus tip. The sixth tip, or a sixth sense you might call it. It seems to be a sense because it's something that doesn't come natural to a lot of people, but it does to me, and that is smile. Think about it, how many times do you look at a photo of a great big fish and someone's going, or they're going, oh. they don't smile, they forget to smile. I don't think it's because they're miserable, I think it's because they are so busy taking it all in and enjoying the moment of catching the big fish that they forget the most important part of the photo. Look at my teeth. They are crooked. They are as crooked as a crooked thing. They're as crooked as a great big fat chicken twisty. Look at them. They're all over the place. But I still smile. I'll hold a fish up and I'll smile because the smile is contagious. You need to smile for your photos. If you want to submit a photo to a magazine or something, you've got more chance of having it printed if you've got a big smile on your face. If you want to put your photo of yourself on your wall with your biggest catch, it's going to look a hundred times better 
if you are wearing a great big fat juicy smile in that photo don't forget to smile folks i hope these five tips plus the bonus smiley tip have helped you out a lot they're basic to a lot of people but to a lot of people that don't make they uh there's something that they just don't understand if you follow these tips i'm sure your fishing selfies will improve out of sight thanks very much for watching if you haven't already subscribed to my channel i want to consider doing so and i'll see you in the next video